The CFA College Game of the Week, already in progress. As we noted, Bill, last week, Miami has not had it terribly easy themselves uh, today. But it looks like they're going to win it. And uh, Pittsburgh hanging on. Pittsburgh is the next opponent for Miami at Pitt next week. And they can't keep the ball on the tee, so somebody's going to have to come up there and hold it. And I'm sure John Laurie, the referee, is going to suggest it right here. John Laurie, the ref. Uh, Frank Gaines, the umpire. Tom Ayler's the headlinesman. Uh, Terry Turlington. Uh, Dwayne Osborne and Willie Weisbrook. Ricky Dixon now will hold the ball on the tee for Oklahoma as Thompson will kick it with a win and he'll probably knock it all the way back into those seats behind the end zone. It's high and it's hanging right around the goal line in the end zone. Kansas is going to bring it out. It's Schreiner and Schreiner gets it out to about the 18 yard line where he is stopped. He would have gained two yards if he'd kept it in the end zone. Kansas opens with Orth at quarterback. Mike Orth is 6'5 and 205 pounds. And the kind of offense you're going to see today from Kansas, everything is going to swing around that quarterback. It's sort of a version, if you will, of the run and shoot offense. They call it their ace, and it is a run and shoot type scheme where he reads the receiver. The receiver adjusts to what the defensive back is, and then Orth tries to get it to him. So they put a man in motion, Willie Vaughn. Bit banged up, little pop pass goes over the corner, and it's up close to the 25-yard line with Ronnie Caldwell, a junior out of Wichita, making the catch. Kansas is big enough up front, and Nave in particular is a big, strong fellow, and uh, the guy anchoring it is uh, Oswald, and uh, Paul stands in there at 270. So they're big enough, but they're not particularly loaded with experience and speed. Rodney Harris comes into the ball game now for Kansas and you'll note they have four wideouts and they put one in one man in motion here that's Caldwell and again the ball is thrown by Orth but off the hands of Willie Vaughn and this is one of the problems of kind of a cold day and of course he's in head hunting country back there too with those linebackers and corners teeing off on him the Oklahoma defense and the two backers that you're going to see a lot of today will be numbers 44 and 42. 44 being Brian Bosworth and 42 Paul Miliazzo and they're just about as good as anybody in the country. If not as good as anybody, particularly in tandem. Again, it's Willie Vaughn going in motion and Orth this time rolls it out on third down, gets heat, gets it away and it's picked off. Intercepted, bad pass, should never have thrown it. David Vickers comes up with another interception and he's on a roll. Vickers has really had two big weeks. And it was Bosworth putting the pressure on Orth, and he makes a bad throw. It was a zone defense. A lot of times in the run and shoot, you will sprint the quarter out, quarterback out and try to get him outside so he has a little more time to throw because he doesn't have any blockers in the backfield. He looked off his first receiver, went all the way back, and anytime you do that, if you don't throw it with velocity, it's a bad pass. So Vickers' interception gives Oklahoma the ball. First down at the Kansas 23, and the Sooners come out of the wishbone. And they go quickly to the veteran in that backfield, Spencer Tillman, the 200-pound senior from Tulsa, and he's inside the 20 to the 18 for five yards. Jamel Holloway opens at the quarterback position, the sophomore out of Carson, California. And pa Patrick Collins opens at the other halfback position, but there's a new man at fullback, Rodney Anderson, a 210-pound sophomore from Dickinson, Texas. He's in there because Perry and Carr are both banged up, and Perry did not even make the trip. Holloway keeping the ball out of the option, turns the corner with it, and will score. Touchdown, Oklahoma. So the Sooners force a mistake and cash it in. Holloway had over 160 yards last year against Kansas. He makes this entire thing go. Now Kansas, we said, doesn't have the personnel to play with Oklahoma. It's evident here. You see him get picked off. The quarterback's open, and his speed just takes it into the end zone. And Jamel does have speed. Tim Lasher for the extra point. Glenn Sullivan holding. He's 35 for 35, and now make it 36 for Lasher on the season. And with 13-39 to go in the first quarter, you've got your first points. In the triple option, Keith, everybody has an assignment. First, you have to stop the dive man. The outside defensive end usually takes the quarterback, and then the halfback comes up, takes the pitch man. If there is one breakdown, like right there, you see the defensive end supposed to take the quarterback, got picked off. If there's a breakdown, he can score. Also, a big fellow named Jackson sort of opened the door for him, too, when he rolled him back inside. Sooners lead it 7-0.
It's a day for mittens and the fur coats in Lawrence, Kansas, as the first flush of winter has shown. And Oklahoma, two plays for 23 yards after the interception of Orth. Stick it in the end zone to lead 7 0. Will now kick off. Scott Schreiner is deep as Thompson hits it. There'll be no return of that. That's good for three. Went right through the uprights from the 35 yard line with about a 20 mile an hour wind howling at his back. And it, that wind may be even stronger than that as it condenses down inside the stadium. Can't tell you how big that interception was that Kansas threw and Vickers picked off. You know, Vickers last week had a big day nine tackles, seven of them unassisted. He recovered a fumble, broke up a pass, and had a sack. So he continues his streak of outstanding play. Now Kansas comes to the attack again, going with four wide people. Now they put Vaughn back in motion, Orth off the snap. They'll be throwing most of the time today. And at this time to Snell, Arnold Snell, a sophomore out of Mount Vernon, New York. And uh, he'll have a yard at the most on that carry. Bob Valicenti, a graduate and uh, started his coaching career up in upstate New York, Ithaca College. He spent 21 years as an assistant coach at the collegiate and professional level and took over last year when Mike Gottfried left here to go to Pittsburgh. He was an All-American baseball player, played in the Cubs organization. 41-23, Miami continues to roll along undefeated, headed to Pittsburgh next week. Here's Orth going down the line on the option, gives to Snell, and Snell is ridden out of bounds by Dante Jones. Dante Jones is another one of the outstanding Oklahoma linebackers. Junior out of Dallas, Texas. Barry Switzer prowling the sidelines. He knows well the trap that waits a lot of the time in the latter portion of the season. It is third down and call it six for Kansas. Again, the pressure, but Orth steps away from it, and he is run down from behind by first Bosworth and then Jones, and Kansas will have to punt. Brian Bosworth showing you his speed there, why so many people call him the best defensive player in the country. He certainly is up there. If he's not the best, he ranks right up there with all of them. Here he is now. He goes virtually untouched, but he also has great speed because uh, the quarterback is big, strong, and has quick feet. Rich Reith in for the punt, hangs it up into the wind, and it stays up there long enough for Anthony Stafford forced into fair catch. 32 yards on the punt, and that's not that bad considering the velocity of the wind he was kicking it into. It's Oklahoma's ball, 49. Feeds the number one team, the undefeated Miami Hurricanes against Pittsburgh, plus more. Coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. A Benny Testaverde touchdown pass with 127 to go tacked the final touches onto Miami's 41-23 victory over Florida State. Testaverde with a big second half accounted for five TDs in the game. Now let's go back to Keith Jackson. And further evidence that there is no longer a, a race for the Heisman Trophy, I would suggest to you. I think that issue has long since been resolved. It'll be Oklahoma's ball, just short of their 49-yard line. Their first possession, they started on the Kansas 23. And it took them two plays. They handed off inside to the uh, dive man or the fullback out of the wishbone, Rodney Anderson. And he moves the ball to the Kansas side near the 47. The Oklahoma offensive front, and we know, we're know we noting number 88 here, Keith Jackson. You saw him a little while ago on Holloway's touchdown run, the kind of blocker he is. And Murph Johnson was telling me yesterday that he doesn't get enough credit for the heavy work he does at that tight end position. But he can do just about anything that needs to be done, including return punch, and we may see that today as Holloway once again gets loose on the corner, shaking a tackle. And though Holloway is not the biggest guy in town, 5'10", 180, he's very strong. The defense for Kansas, and uh, they line up with a basic four-man front, and sometimes you'll see the backers come up to give more helmets up in front. But there are two backers, uh, Ziegler and, and Bredesen. Bre uh, Ziegler is the center fielder. He plays, he plays wherever he wants to, really, because he is he's a fine athlete and had a 63-yard uh, touchdown run off an interception two years ago in Kansas upset Oklahoma. This carry goes back to Spencer Tillman, his second of the day. Spencer reaches the 40-yard line, and that's the Sooner first down. You were talking about Keith Jackson. You know, they should make it a prerequisite when they put their game plans together at Oklahoma to get the ball, or at least let Keith Jackson touch the ball six times every game. He is that good, and he's 
He wants the ball more. And every time he does catch it, he has an average of 29.4 yards a catch, so that is impressive. And he's big, strong, fast. He is, I think we both concur, the best tight end in the country. Holloway hands again to the up man, Anderson, and he cuts through to the 25-yard line, inside the 25, brought down by Wayne Ziegler, the senior from Nickerson, Kansas, and it's another Sooner first down. Barry Switzer is very high on young Rodney Anderson, 28. Nobody touches him that time. Good blocking up front, and he just carries it on his own down to the 24-yard line. But look at this. This is the power blocking you get out of Anthony Phillips. Phillips is perhaps the best athlete on that offensive line. He's played tackle, guard, and they moved him around, and he's strong, and he does a good job wherever he is. He had a pretty good grip on that defensive guy that time, too, and got away with it. As Anderson carries one more time, they're going to season him today. They would prefer not to have to play Lydell Carr, who is nicked up. And as we told you, Perry is not even here. The OU offense averaging six and a half yards per play on the season. When you look into the Oklahoma press guide, the media guide, you look for Rotney Anderson, there is one line. It says, add Rotney Anderson, 13. Inside. And another first down as Spencer Tillman carries the ball. Spencer in his fifth year at Oklahoma, having gone through a siege of injuries, but when he is healthy, he's among the better ones in the country. Brought down by Rick Bredesen, a junior from Overland Park, Kansas. He plays in that middle linebacker position for the Jayhawks. Sooners leading seven to nothing, and looks like they're going for another one. The ball is just short of the 10-yard line. First down for the Sooners. He turns the corner, gets the block, touchdown, number two for Holloway. Carlson had a hold of him and couldn't hold him. He just stepped out of his arms and cantered around the corner, and again, Jackson got in, blocked, that put him in the end zone. Again, it's the triple option. First, the dive man. Now, this is where Holloway is so good. Watch it. He reads now and sees he's got a blocker to the right. The out man takes the pitch man, and he's all alone. Gets a block from Shepard. It wasn't much of a block, but it was a cutoff enough to get him into the corner. Lasher for the extra point. Going for 37 in a row. And he's got it. At 9.39 to go in the first quarter of play, the Sooners have jumped out to a 14-0 lead. And coming up the next season, and the Kansas Jayhawks will be very prominent again in collegiate basketball. Al Crockett now visiting with the boss of basketball at KU, Larry Brown. Keith, it is good to see this face again. Larry, of course, preparing for the season. They've been practicing for, what, two weeks now, Larry? Yeah, two weeks. So, um, we got our first game with the Russians on the 19th of November. Okay, now do you know, we're going to have a little quiz. What Larry Brown, this basketball, Kansas, the football team, and football in general, and this all have in common? We'll come back in a minute and tell you. Keith, back to you. Deep history of the game of basketball at this campus. We'll go back to him in just a moment. Oklahoma versus Kansas with Danny Manning in the lineup. Pretty good matchup with Mike yeah. Worth and the rest of these Blue Jayhawks today. Could be a mismatch. High hanging kick by Thompson way back into the end zone and no return. So, okay, you will have it. First down at the 20. Let's go back to Al. Keith, of course, the answer to that is James Naismith, the father of basketball. Who, Larry, had the only losing record? At Kansas, of all the coaches, he's the only one. He was a basketball coach at Kansas. Also, in the uh, 1890s, uh, changed over from a wool helmet and is credited with designing the first leather helmet for the game of football. Larry, give uh, in honor of James Naismith the old peach basket a try, would you? One more quick. Do we have a chance? Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was great. Keith, back to you. And we will be here in February for Notre Dame in Kansas as we go to college basketball starting January 18 with a doubleheader. And Orth now connects with Caldwell, and the Jayhawks have picked up their first first down of the ball game out around the 32-yard line. Run and shoot again, and it's read all the way. Now the receiver has to read the defense, although he sees him playing off throws his arm up and that's an instant sign to Mike Orth that he's going to turn and he wants the ball quickly so they got it to him in a hurry again four wide people this time they stretch him all the way across the field 
on first down or gets some pressure and goes down in the arms of number 80 Troy Johnson the defensive right in he came in virtually untouched and decked him all the way back on the 24 yard line a definite weakness of the run and shoot offense is the fact there aren't any backs in the backfield to block see Snell is already trying to sneak out of the backfield into a pass pattern and it leaves it wide open for Johnson to come clean and make the sack Snell was trying to show that he was going to block and then release into the flat. He was going to be in the pattern. Didn't throw a block at all, and Johnson came clean. Second down and 18 as they lose eight on the sack. And North gives it to Snell, and Snell is decked right at the line of scrimmage by the nose guard, Dante Williams, a big 270-pound freshman out of Gainesville, Texas. So it'll be third down and 18. Michigan winning big today and Ohio State thrashing Iowa. Auburn winning and they have won that many times over the years at Gainesville, Florida. Third down and 18 now. They've got trips on the bottom of the picture. Three wide people dump it off trying to set up a little screen action the other way and legs get tangled up. The gain is just over the 30 for Arnold Snell. But it'll be fourth down for Kansas, and the Jayhawks will have to punt into the wind again. Oklahoma has had the ball, two possessions, and they've stuck in the end zone both times with Holloway scoring. We've got 7.40 to go in the first quarter. Wraith is a transfer from Los Angeles Junior College. His first punt today into the wind hung up there a while, but it only traveled 32 yards. Patrick Collins is the deep man for Oklahoma. That's a little better kick, looks like. Probably not much more in distance, though, but he hung it up and again forces the fair catch, and it goes for 30 yards on the carry. So it'll be Oklahoma's ball at their own 40-yard line. Controversial finish in Chapel Hill. With four seconds left, Lee Glarmus of North Carolina kicked a 28-yard field goal that beat Maryland for the Tar Heels 32-30. Maryland coach Bobby Ross contended that North Carolina had already called its last time out, shouldn't have had a chance to set up for the winning field goal. Ross, as you will see, chased referee Donald Fafford all across the field, chased him to the official's locker room, eventually had to be separated from Fafford by a campus cop. Bobby Ross in the midst of what has been a frustrating season for him and for everyone at the University of Maryland. Keith? Keith, the feeling in College Park is with the present situation at the University of Maryland is that Bobby is very frustrated with the happenings. Dick Dahl, who hired him, has now resigned. And the feeling is strongly that Bobby will leave at the end of this year. First down, Oklahoma at their 40. And Eric Mitchell is now in the ball game at quarterback for Oklahoma. And he figures to get quite a bit of playing time today. And he moves the ball for five yards, actually closer to six yards, just over the 45. Well, what in if, in fact, they had given him an extra timeout? I mean, I don't blame him. I'd be a little hot, too. Well, I would, too. You know, we saw that one other time last year in a game that we did. Uh, it was West Virginia and Boston College that happened. Hey, give us a sideline, please, man, right now. Second down, call it five for the Sooners. Their third possession of the ball game. They lead 14 to nothing. Ride it off to the up man. In there is Earl Johnson. And Johnson, who has moved over into that fullback slot now, and will do some of the heavy work. Earl is another running back at Oklahoma that had a bad knee injury, and he finally fought his way through it and rehabilitated himself and is getting to play here in his senior season. But he, if he had stayed healthy, I expect he would have really been something. He'd have had some numbers to remember. He came in as a freshman along with Tillman. It was very good. Same situation with Spencer Tillman. You mentioned he's one of the best in the yep. country when he's hit. He's healthy, and he has been injured quite a bit. That's Johnson carrying and breaking one tackle, butting heads downfield with Wayne Ziegler and carries it for an Oklahoma first down at the Kansas 38-yard line. Just watch the offensive line. That's where games are won or lost, and they are controlling it again. Anthony Phillips, did you see big number 68 there? Put his arms around the man. He was holding, but he got away with it again. And Johnson now, low center of gravity, just good power running. 
It's not a particularly good day for the folks up on Freeloaders Hill up there. That's that beautiful section of campus that leads up to the Campanile. And here's the carry by Spencer Tillman inside the 30, down to about the 29. He's a yard short of his first down. On sunny days in the autumn, uh, that great stretch of green grass is literally covered by blankets and people who are picnicking and watching the ball game as it leads up the hill toward the campus. Would you call it Freeloader Hill? <laughs> pocket, of, pocket saver incline? They got one of those at Strawberry Canyon out at University of California in Berkeley. It's so steep, if you lose your footing, you slide uh, all the way downtown. Earl Johnson carries, gets the first down. Inside the 25 to the 23. So Oklahoma starting this March from its own 40 is just blowing them out of there right now. Incidentally, Al Troutwig has pledged a, a valiant try to the very top of the Campanile before the day is done. Eric Mitchell coming down, flips it off as he is hit, gives the ball away to Spencer Tillman, who loses the ball as he is knocked out of bounds, but they'll give him possession to the 21 of Kansas, and there the Sooners will have it second down. Second down and eight. Colorado came from behind to beat Oklahoma State today, and of course Colorado shocked the structure of the Big 8 Conference last week when they defeated the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Oklahoma's headed that way soon. Well, that Colorado wishbone, Bill McCartney, finally getting the right people in the right place and getting things to go right for him. This is Anthony Stafford. And Stafford is inside the 15 to the 14, a yard short of the first down. Anthony is a sophomore out of St. Louis. He and Patrick Collins may be the swiftest of those running backs, but Stafford in particular can fly. Big number 73 for Kansas. Teddy Newman was in on the tackle. He's the fastest defensive lineman they have for the Jayhawks. He said he came to Kansas because he likes to play the run. And this is a running conference. I wonder if he'll feel that way after this afternoon. Double tight end now as Duncan Parham checks in for Oklahoma on third down and two. Mitchell, bad toss, coming back to cover it, Spencer Tillman. Mitchell was hit as he tried to deliver the ball to Tillman, and it squirted loose, and there's a loss back to the 27. Johnny almost, Granderson's a man who makes the play. Almost looked as if the pitch was tipped. Here comes the, the left arm there, and I don't know if... Uh, Johnny Anderson got into it or not. He may have gotten a hand on it and knocked it backwards. So this brings up fourth down. And Tim Lasher is into the ball game for a field goal try. He will hit it just short of the 33-yard line. Make it a 43-yard kick for Lasher. He's hit 8 out of 10 this season. Make it 9 out of 11 as he drifts it right over the top and into the heart of it. And with three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, it's Oklahoma 17 to nothing. It was 1984. The Oklahoma Sooners, ranked number two in the nation, came to Lawrence, Kansas to play the Jayhawks. Troy Aikman's pass picked off here by safety. Wayne Ziegler goes 63 yards for a touchdown. And the Jayhawks went on to one of the great upsets in their history. 28-11, beating the Sooners. I see no prospect of the Kansas Jayhawks pulling off a shocker here today. Not the way Oklahoma in his first three possessions have taken the ball and just stuck it in the end zone. This last time they didn't get the touchdown but settled for three as Thompson again with the wind at his back knocks it well back into the end zone where Schreiner puts it down for a location for the Jayhawks at the 20. Here again is out. Keith, this may be pretty scary football for most of the fans here, but that's nothing. This is a scary football. We got this for Halloween. Meanwhile, we had a great trip to the bookstore this week. A reminder to do your holiday shopping early. This is a, a University of Kansas Christmas ball. Okay, Kirsten, thank you very much. And Jeannie has our souvenir of the week. You know, we may have showers here today, and we have here a Kansas Jayhawks soap on a rope. Thank you very much, everybody. Keith, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you start bathing outdoors in this kind of weather, you'll be in the hospital for a morning, I'll tell you. Join the Eskimo Club. <laughs> Timeout on the field. Kansas ball at the 20. KU called the time. 
Tomorrow, some 20,000 will be competing in America's largest marathon field in New York City. Defending champion Greta Bites of Norway, Orlando Pizzolatto of Italy will be competing. ABC Sports is presenting coverage from start to finish. 10.30 it begins, 10.30 in the morning, Eastern Time. Well, if you're the offensive coordinator at Kansas, what are you thinking now? You can't run, you can't hide, so your only option then is to throw and keep throwing. You've got to give up something to play the run and shoot, as you well noted a few minutes ago, and uh, the run and shoot also takes away any kind of deception to freeze any backers. So those ends and backers are pretty much free to come jump all over your bones just like that. As Snell tries to get around the corner, and he's dropped just over the 20-yard line. Well, they went to a split back offense that time, which indicated that they were going to run. But remember now, the Oklahoma defense is number one in the nation against the rush. Well, they've only allowed, uh, with that carry, 317 yards total this season. And Oklahoma has not allowed a rushing touchdown all year. Mike Worth is the quarterback for the Jayhawks. Gives the ball inside to Mike Rogers, number 24, a junior out of Smith Center. And there is just simply nothing there. They're looking at third down and 10. Brian Bosworth, fourth year junior. He'll probably go to the NFL next year. He'll be a starter wherever he goes. Quality player. Certainly gets the publicity. Although I think now he's trying to play that down and get back to playing football. Yeah, I think you've taken the rainbows out of his hair. I didn't see any sparkling there yesterday. Third down and ten. They're there. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> or throws it, throws it. Won't get the first down as the pass is caught by Ronnie Caldwell. And once again, Kansas will have to punt. So they've had the ball four times, and they will be punting the third time. Uh, the first time the pass was intercepted, and Oklahoma scored off of it. With two minutes to go in the first quarter, the Sooners will again have good field position if they handle the ball. Patrick Collins is the deep man. Rich Reith will punt it. 32 and 30. The two kicks, he'll improve that considerably when he turns around in the second quarter and gets the wind at his back. Make note, Patrick Collins is the fastest Sooner on the roster. Again, it's high enough and hangs there long enough, forcing another fair catch. Ricky Dixon stepping up to make this call for the fair catch after a 25-yard punt. And Oklahoma owns the football first down near the Kansas 48. Let's pause five seconds so our local stations can identify themselves. There's uh, a couple right there candidates for something serious <laughs> walking around with no blows on Oklahoma leading 17 to nothing now gets the ball back at the Kansas 48 and Eric Mitchell throws the first pass of the day for the Sooners and it is dropped by Derek Shepard the temperature early on today was in right at 50 51 degrees but it has plummeted with the increase of the wind and the almost arrival of the rain when last we checked it was 37 degrees i'm not so sure if there's precipitation whether it'll be rain it might be Fort snow <laughs> yeah, yeah. second down and ten happy halloween <laughs> mitchell runs away from the pursuit delivers the ball outside to anthony stafford and he's finally knocked out of bounds it looked like he might get by the last man, Jamie Steinhauser, but Jamie got enough of him to force him out of bounds, and there's an example of how quick he is. Let's watch it again. I'm not so sure Steinhauser got any of them. He almost jumped over him. Again, it's a good read by Jamel Holloway. See, he, everybody's inside, so he pitches it outside and gets the kickout block. Now, here comes Steinhauser. will dive at his feet. Stafford goes over top of him. Right here, look. Really didn't touch him, but he lost his balance and had to go out of bounds. Put him out at the 15-yard line, where it's first down for the Sooners. Eric Mitchell.
Mitchell is knocked down at the 12, back at the 11-yard line as he elected to turn it back inside. Eric is a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and he was brought down by John Randolph, a senior for the Hawks from Kansas City. He was tackled by the linebacker over there, John Randolph. Now, Randolph told me he's a laid-back person. He says he just likes to relax and watch his piranha eat. Now, what does that tell you about the guy? He's got pet piranha. He's got all the fingers. <laughs> Second down and seven. Mitchell pitching it out. Once again, here comes Stafford. But this time, Wayne Ziegler comes up and uh, brings him down. But you got a penalty flag and a face mask ball coming here, I do believe, against Ziegler. Wayne almost ran by him, and I think in reaching back to get a hold of him. No, nope, we're not either. We've got a clip against Oklahoma. So the Sooners make their first mistake of the ball game. And it's Jackson who was trying to get his helmet and shoulder past the man and uh, couldn't do it. So he came right down the back of his legs. And that is a clip. Tillman, Johnson, Anderson, Holloway, Mitchell, and Stafford have all carried the ball now for Oklahoma. And Stafford with the greatest number of yards at 40. With 37 seconds to go in the first quarter, the penalty is going to move the football back to the 26-yard line. Clip on the offense. Second down. Boy, this is the time in that defensive line when you start talking about playing for pride. You don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to look like you can't play football. So you say, all right, let's start, start running to the football. Let's try to get 11 helmets on that football every time. Carrying the ball up the middle is Earl Johnson, and he's down to the 10. He needs five more yards for a first down. Wayne Ziegler made that hit on Johnson. Looked like Earl might pop that one all the way. Well, again, it's, it's a power football team, and we said that Kansas doesn't have the personnel. You see, they all get cut off. Ziegler, though, is a quality player, number 18. He could play for almost anybody in the country. You showed his interception two years ago, and he can really play. So the first quarter is over. Oklahoma leading 17-0 and threatening to add to that total. Second quarter play. Oklahoma owning the football at the 11-yard line of Kansas. It is third down, call it five and a half. They lead 17 to nothing. Eric Mitchell is in at quarterback, replacing Jamel Holloway. Keeps it, turns the corner with it. And he should have a first down. Looked like he was uh, getting the ball and shoulders across the five as he was tackled. It's a game like that first quarter, Keith, where the statistics really tell the story. One turnover for Kansas, and then the Oklahoma just ran away with it. 164 yards total rushing gets minus 10. The ironic part, the surprising part to me, is that Kansas has had seven running plays and only six pass plays. So they're trying to run the ball against the nation's number one rushing defense. And thus far, they're minus 10 in that category. And they don't give the spot to Mitchell, so he comes up just a bit short in his first down bid. And it'll be fourth down. They're going to go for it. Obviously, they would. And knocking Kansas right off the line of scrimmage from the first play. Spencer Tillman, Anthony Stafford, Earl Johnson lined up in the backfield behind Eric Mitchell. Mitchell keeps it himself and gets to the four, and that will be a first down. First and goal for Oklahoma. Eric Mitchell out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, one of the most highly recruited athletes when he was a senior in high school, came here playing behind Jamel Holloway. There was a quarterback controversy there for a while. They didn't know which one would start. Holloway maintained or retained his starting position, but Mitchell is a quality athlete. Rodney Anderson goes back into the ball game for Oklahoma at fullback. And on first and goal, Mitchell sets it. Gives it to Spencer Tillman. And Spencer is right around the two before he is wrestled down. Oklahoma scheduled a ball, a ball slick and hard on a cold day like this. Well, that's right, and the handoff was high, too. You bring in another quarterback, see, and the, instead of putting it right in the stomach, you put it up high on the breastplate of the shoulder pads, and it almost bounced off, and he almost fumbled the ball. 
Second down and goal. Ball is just inside the three. Up man Anderson carries. Uh, Johnson it is back in uh, the ball game instead of Anderson. And Johnson is down to the one. So it's third and goal from the one for Oklahoma. Now that handoff was better, but again, it looked like there was going to be a fumble. Johnson was fooling around with the football before he really tucked it away. Consequently, he couldn't get that momentum. He wanted to carry him into the end zone. Anderson comes back in, brings a play with him from the sideline on third and one. A third and goal from the one. Mitchell is caught. Back on the four by Rick Bredesen, the middle linebacker. And he is held short. Boy, I'll tell you this. Uh, fourth down and goal. Good looking defensive surge. You can see that time the line of scrimmage is controlled by Kansas. Short yardage defense. Look at the lineman there on the laying on the field. That's all they have to do is penetrate. Watch him dive here. Submarine. See him cause the pile up. That linebacker comes free through there, and Bredesen makes the tackle. That is a good looking short yardage defense. Penetration is the key. Establish a new line of scrimmage. One yard deep in the offensive backfield. Let the linebackers do the penetration. The defensive linemen don't have to penetrate. All they have to do is submarine and dive forward. Let the linebackers come and make the play. And then they'll get support from the secondary. Kansas calls the timeout. That is the second. They have one remaining in the first half. We have 12.36 to play in the first half. And they gave progress of the ball to the three yard line. So it'll be fourth down and goal for Oklahoma from the three. And uh, with the timeout, Oklahoma's kept the offensive backfield intact of Mitchell at quarterback, Tillman, Stafford, and Johnson. So they apparently intend to go for it, disdaining the field goal. They don't really need it at this juncture, leading 17 to nothing. No, but it would be fun to see that Kansas defense just raise its back and have a stand here. We mentioned they were ranked in the 90s in scoring defense. And this, something like this could really help the young, inexperienced players get some confidence. Now they've changed their mind on the Oklahoma sideline. They have sent Lasher into the ball game. So Tim Lasher is on the field, putting the tee down at the 10 for a 20-yard field goal. He hit one earlier from 43. And now he has one from 20, and at 12.33 to play in the first half. It is now Oklahoma 20 and Kansas nothing. Here's the offense, the Chicago Bears. The Super Bowl champs always look sweet. They meet on ABC's Monday Night Football. Maybe the ranks of unbeaten and untied dwindled again. Auburn once led 17-0 in the fourth quarter, but Florida has Kerwin Bell back in action at quarterback today. Bell ran one, threw a touchdown pass with 36 seconds left to Ricky Natiel, ran in the two-point conversion himself, and now with 13 seconds left, and Auburn on its last gasp. The Gators lead 18-17. We'll get back to you, Keith. Okay, Drake. Yeah, there's a big wince amongst the Sugar Bowl folks over that one. Alabama down last week. Auburn apparently going down this week. Gainesville is a tough place to win. Thompson's kickoff into the wind goes straight up in the air and comes straight down. I mean, that wind is rough. And you get some idea. Now, with the wind at his back, he was knocking the thing uh, almost out of the stadium a while ago. And now into the wind, it goes up and it stayed up. And a fair catch by Lindell Yarnell, and Kansas will have their best field position to start a possession at the 30-yard line. Mike Orth comes out at quarterback. Arnold Snell, the lone remaining back, and they've got four wideouts. Oklahoma showing a four-man front right now. Orth passes away and thrown very hard and incomplete, just as he was sandwiched. Worth his hurt, Keith. getting up slowly. He took a pretty good lick. He was sandwiched in between players. Pittsburgh host Miami next Saturday at 3 Eastern time. Miami beating Florida State today while Pittsburgh was losing to Syracuse. 
This is Orth now. Again, he has no backs in the backfield to pick up anybody coming from the outside. Here comes the pressure from both sides. He does get sandwiched. He got up slowly, had the wind knocked out of him. And whether he'll be able to continue, I'm not quite sure. I don't think so. At least until he catches his breath on the sidelines. Tom Quick is listed behind him. They're going to take a timeout and see if, see if they can get him back in. But he has to sit out of play by the rules. He's got to sit out of play, right. 12-28 to go in the first half. And Kansas now spends its last timeout. Oklahoma and Kansas have the longest uninterrupted rivalry in the nation, spanning a total of 83 years. Kansas now gets Mike Worth back into the ball game by calling the timeout, giving him time to recover his breath at second down and 10 from the Jayhawks 30. Vaughn, the man in motion, handed off inside to Snell. Snell trying to pop outside, get some running room, and Bosworth just ate him up. It's a good call, Keith. If it's an injury timeout, he can't come back. He's got to sit out one play. But they did call a timeout and let him catch his breath so that they could come back in and play. Although Donahue, the freshman quarterback, was ready to come out onto the field, I think at this particular juncture, trailing like they are, and really right now in, in serious trouble. They wanted to get Worth back in there. Third down and still 10. No, excuse me, not 10, 14. Horse pass again thrown under pressure intended for Caldwell and uh, penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Let's see about the penalty, otherwise it'll be fourth down. It's holding against Kansas. And so they'll flip the marker, and Kansas will have to punt it. This time with the win, though, Reith should be able to get something on the ball. Got a quick look at Bob Valiceni, the head coach of Kansas, on the sidelines. You know, this is his initiation into the Big Eight. Offense. You're not a charter Decline. member of the Big Four Eight down. coaching Four fraternity down. until Oklahoma or Nebraska run you out of the ballpark. Patrick Collins, the deep man. Reith is in the punt. His first three were into the win. This is the first time that Rich has had a chance to go with it. Penalty flag, kick is away. And you got three Oklahoma people back there jousting to accept the punt. Ricky Dixon finally gets control of it after a 36-yard punt. But remember, there's a flag back up field. Oklahoma was offside, and I would think Kansas would want to do it again. Coming up this Monday night on ABC, the Los Angeles Rams and Chicago Bears, and Steve Fuller is scheduled to start for the Chicago Bears. Jim McMahon is still having trouble getting that sore shoulder back in shape, so Steve Fuller has been penciled in as the starter for the Bears against the Rams, and you'll see it here on ABC Monday night at 9 Eastern time. That's just about the time I'm putting my steak on the grill out in the backyard in California. <laughs> I'd say I wish I was in California right now. It's cold. Barry Switzer, remarkable record since he took over as the head coach. Defense, fourth down. From Crossett, Arkansas. Played for Frank Broyles at Arkansas. It's still fourth down after the penalty, but they'll give Reith another chance to hit it. He got only 36 yards out of the last one. The Oklahoma people, three of them back there, and they were sort of undecided as to who was going to make the catch on the last play and almost let the ball get away. There is no pressure. And it gets a little deeper. It goes on his knees to Patrick Collins. So that is a 41-yard punt by Rich Reith, and Oklahoma has the ball back, leading 20 to nothing. Well, number one, Miami was a winner. Play Pittsburgh next week. Michigan winning big today, rolling up 69 points against the Illini. Auburn losing to Florida by a point, so another of the unbeatens has fallen. Arizona State and Washington play tonight out on the West Coast, and that one could be for the Rose Bowl. Jamel Holloway is back in at quarterback for Oklahoma. Gives the ball to Collins and Collins from the 28 up to about the 32. 
field. Keith, it was just announced on the PA that that Nebraska-Kansas State game has been delayed at half because of a blizzard in Lincoln. I knew they were expecting some snow, but I didn't know of that depth of blizzard, huh? Nebraska leads 17-0, and it is being delayed by a blizzard. Oklahoma finishes the season at Lincoln. November 15, they go to Boulder to play Colorado. They might be in the snow two successive weeks. Next week, they're at home against Missouri. Not much there as the KU defensive people close quickly on uh, Earl Johnson, who's in there at the fullback position. Earl's been in and out and around the Oklahoma football team enough. I would imagine he could play almost any place. He, he knows the book. Sets him on third down and four. Keeps it. Runs away from pressure. Now they get it. Number 31 coming up. Mike Fisher, cornerback, to make the tackle. And he drops Holloway back on the 28. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Sooners. Mike Long was there, too. But look at this defense now. There's seven guys. See all those helmets in the blue jerseys? Kansas loaded up up front. They bring everybody. They know it's going to be a running play. Oklahoma doesn't throw the football that much. So finally, they bring everybody, load up, and they come for the football, and they made the big play. They got 10 blue shirts up on the line. They're going after the punter, Todd Thompson. He's standing back at his 13, hits it at the 17, into the wind, gets a tight spiral, and it's a good kick. And a fair catch is called by Rodney Harris back inside the 35 at the 32. That's a 40-yard punt into about a 15, 20 mile an hour win. 9.38 to go in the first half. Up on Florida's upset of Auburn in which Kerwin Bell entered the game after four weeks off and generated all 18 points. His two-point conversion run gave the Gators the victory. Auburn missed a 53-yard field goal. Meanwhile, BC leads Army 27-20 with two minutes to go. But Army has the football at the BC 22-yard line. Now back to Keith Jackson and Lawrence. Thank you, Jim. Kerwin Bell, quality quarterback. He really is. The Jayhawks come up now. First down at their 32. Tim Letford is now the lone back. Replacing Snell. And Orth is caught and dropped by Mike Aljo, defensive end, who just took a lunge and got him to the leg and took him down. It's a tough game for Oklahoma coaches because it takes the team out of their rhythm. A lot of different people play. You don't want to get anybody banged up in a game like this. It's the kind of game where you know they're going to have 38 to 50 points or allow maybe 13 most. But they want to keep a shutout and have three straight. Sonny Brown comes up from his safety spot, playing right on the line of scrimmage. They go the other way with it. The pass is caught by Willie Vaughn, and Vaughn is ruled out of bounds by David Vickers who had the interception and the first possession against Kansas, and they promptly scored in two plays from the 23. So the ball is resting now at the 33 for KU, which was just about the original line of scrimmage, where it is third down. Arnold Snell checks back into the Kansas backfield, and he is the lone back. time dumps it off to Snell Snell trying to drag two men with him and can't do it as Sonny Brown came firing in on North and forced a very quick pop by him and he was able to force the ball into Snell but they come up short of the first down again Oklahoma comes with a big rush it's not that they're blitzing a whole lot but they're playing games up front this time they do bring the blitz it is Brown and it's a good unload by the quarterback Orth just to get rid of it and get it to Snell underneath in the little short screen. And they will punt on fourth and three. Wait's last kick for the win with a 41-yarder. Collins is deep for the Sooners. Penalty flag down. And this is his best effort of the ball game. Collins takes it. Wiggles back for about three. You've got another flag down where the ball was caught. There are two flags on the board. So there's a flag back up at the line of scrimmage, and there's a flag downfield where the catch was made. Yards on the 
Reading lips, I think I saw one man say white. He would have been the man who threw the flag downfield where the ball was caught. The other flag upfield came from the lineman. Procedure, Kent. Clipping, Oklahoma. You know, Mike Worth has been fairly impressive under a lot of pressure. He has been sacked three times and thrown an interception, but he is also 6 for 10 for 42 yards. It, I'd like to see what he could do with a lot of time. Last week, he had 8 for 8 starting the game and ended up with a pretty good day. Illegal procedure. Clip on return. Replay the down. Replay. Bring him back. I say Orth had a pretty good day last week. That's 280 yards passing against Oklahoma State, which is the number one defense in the nation against the pass. He is at no time today. So we'll replay it. <laughs> Somebody's working on a pumpkin. Cover six. Take that home to the youngest kid. He crossed on that pumpkin before the game's over. <laughs> Kick is out of there. That's far and away the best part of the ball game. And it goes into the end zone. He had a nice tight spiral on it. Got it high in the air. And it traveled 61 yards. 7.25 to go for a step. And just outside the Oklahoma dressing room, let's go trick-or-treating. Oh, sure, son. This is what I'm handing out today. Thank you very much. Appropriate, don't you think? <laughs> be interesting to see now what happens uh, with Oklahoma. If they don't do something offensively this time, I think you're going to see that man chewing on some coattails because uh, there is always a danger when you get too many points too soon. Sometimes the team will ease up a little bit. And I think he's concerned about it, but he probably shouldn't be as Rodney Anderson just explodes up the middle with a huge hole and immediately picks up a first down at the 33-yard line. Look what the Sooners have done with the ball. The last time they had it, they punted. But now they have moved it very quickly for 13 yards. Hard to get upset when you score four out of the five times you have the football. That's true. But... <laughs> Jamel Holloway. Pass is caught by Derek Shepard. And Shepard is down at the 39-yard line. The Campanile, the tallest building on campus, Al Trotwick now, is on his way to the top. This is his rehearsal climb yesterday. <laughs> he survived that. It becomes the higher you go, the more challenging it becomes. It's a, he approached it gingerly, and we'll see if he made it to the top today. Fumble off the football by Rocky Anderson, and Kansas recovers it. So the Sooners now turn it over. Now Barry Switzer can get upset. Johnny Granderson is the man who made the fumble recovery. But Anderson again breaks into the secondary. It was Ziegler again. Quality player. Got his arm in there. You can see his right arm stripped the ball free of Anderson. And Granderson came and recovered it quickly. So now the last two possessions Oklahoma's had the football walked away without any points. And this time turn it over. That's what Oklahoma did not want to do. I told you he'd be getting feisty in a few minutes. Kansas ball up at the 46. And Orth has a little time but then throws it. Too low, and it is batted down at the line of scrimmage by Steve Bryan, a 6'3", 260-pound senior. Now, Al, have you made the trek? Yeah, Keith, uh, this is about as close to feeling like Edmund Hillary as I'm going to get, but it was <laughs> worth the climb. This is, of course, called the Campanile, or the bell tower here on, at Kansas. It's in memory of the World War II veterans. It's a great seat. As a matter of fact, it's the best seat in the house because I can see football and also that dangerous weather approaching from Nebraska way. Back to you. Be careful coming down. Second down and ten. Got it away by Sonny Brown. Got one hand out pass intended for Willie Vaughn. If Sonny had been able to pull it in, 
it would have been six. Nobody between him and the goal line. Well, this time you see Snell does try to stay in at block 22. See him there pull up. Now Orth reads his first receiver all the way. Sonny Brown also reads his eyes because he never looked off that receiver. Comes in, steps in front of him, and almost makes the interception. Dallas, Texas. Third down and 10 for Kansas. 6.15 to go in the first half. Stepped away from the pressure man, gets it off, and uh, it is incomplete. Pass intended for Peter Samuel, and covering was Scott Girl. Girl, a sophomore from Hominy, Oklahoma, and Samuel from Iola, Kansas. Crowd want to pass interference, and I agree with him. I thought Garl came through the receiver too early trying to get to the football. You can't do that. Now you see the quickness here of Orth. He evades one tackler right there. Now he comes out and he sees his receiver come free, who's skating with him. See that? See how Garl comes through him? That's pass interference. But no call. Reef into the win, 28 and a half yard average. With the win in two punts, 51 yard average. The last one went 61 as the Sooners elected to let it bounce on the artificial surface. Pressure on him this time, and he shoots it up into the air. The wind helps it, and Patrick Collins calls fair catch back at the 14-yard line. That a 39-yard putt and a goodly amount of pressure on the punter reef. Five minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first half. That's what we have for you at halftime. Jim will be talking with Vinny Testaverde. And we have... Uh, a piece of videotape that was furnished to us when we came out here that's quite striking on the Kansas players going to the Lansing State Prison. You'll enjoy that one. Eric Mitchell is back in at quarterback now for Oklahoma. As the Sooners go first down on the 14, Mitchell going to line, a line with the ball, keeps it and turns it to the 22. Ball came loose, but they're going to call him down. Brown can't cause a fumble. Well, and the whistle had blown before the ball came loose, too. Keep thinking of Al up there on top of that thing without any ropes. Sir Edmund Hillary wore ropes up in Mount Everest. <laughs> Here's that play again. Now you'll see Mitchell reading as he comes down the line of scrimmage. That's the key, but now he's got to tuck the ball away. And again, Ziegler is there, gets pressure from the other side now, and the ball comes loose, but again, it's after he hits the ground. That's a good call. Earl Johnson, 205-pound senior out of Dallas, takes it into the middle on second down at about three, and he is held short of his first down. OU has picked up 211 yards on the ground so far in this first half, and Kansas on the ground, minus 20. Of course, that'll include your quarterback sacks. Third down and a yard and a half. Johnson, the fullback, will have the first down as he rolls over the top of big number 77, Cesar Rinty, Jr. from Hartshore in Oklahoma. SMU at halftime leading Texas A&M in the ball game. Texas Tech was favored in the ball game, as a matter of fact. And one of the few times that uh, I can remember Tech ever being favored over Texas. First down. From the 26 for Oklahoma. Mitchell reads it, turns it, and finally goes down when Marvin Maddox, a junior out of Pomona, California, comes in to assist on the tackle. Talking about Texas, of course, Freddie Akers, the pressure continues to mount on him, and I feel certain that'll be another coaching change at the end of the season. kind of things start and start and they just seem to gain momentum and the media feeds it and the first thing you know it's out of hand you certainly can't fault Fred Eckers record carrying the ball is Patrick Collins and Patrick is up near the 35 about a couple of yards short of the first down with 335 to go in the first half well you're right as Aker Acres record now he's won over 75 percent of his games but what the alumni is upset about is that against team with winning records he is 9 and 11. A lot of people are going to have some uh, yardage today I think for Oklahoma a lot of them already have it is third down a yard and a half. 
<laughs> Going for the first down and getting more is Patrick Collins out to the 43-yard line. Keith Jackson may not get the football as often as he would like, but he does so many other things. Look at 88 now. This is what he does as well as anybody in the country, and that is block. He's taking a guy and just driving him right off the line. Put him on his back. There you go, the takedown. 6'3", 240 pounds. A junior out of Little Rock. And we've got a Sooner down on the field. Hurt on the last play. 3.08 to go in the first half. Patrick Collins has been helped off the field now for Oklahoma, big number 33. He's carrying the football. You see him cut inside. Now watch this, helmet to helmet. See him get racked up there. And then he goes down. But what happened, Rick Clayton, the linebacker, 33 for Kansas, came down on his leg, and they're working on his leg. They helped him off the field. Anthony Stafford goes in to, uh, no, it's Spencer Tillman going in to replace uh, Patrick Collins. Eric Mitchell straight back for the pass. Good protection. Going, oh, he lost control of the ball. He's trying to go deep to Derek Shepard, and the ball just simply slipped out of his hands. The temperature is in the mid-30s, and uh, it's cold, and just simply couldn't hang on to it. Three yard line, second down and ten. Obviously, Bosworth talking about Vinny Testaverde. Wants him one more time. He may get him. Good. This is Johnson, and Kansas gets him short of the line of scrimmage. Rick Bredesen and Stacy Henson, the middle backer and the right side backer, bringing him down. I'll tell you this, though, all the talk in the world won't shake Vinny Testaverde. He's a cool customer. Performed extremely well in that big win today over Florida State. Third down. They need nine. Mitchell runs away from the pressure. Brought down short of his first down as he got the ball up to about the 48. Rick Clayton made the hit on him. And so the Sooners now will have to punt into the wind. Rick Clayton is punching some tickets out there. He's the one that hit Collins, and they helped Collins off the field. That time he put Holloway on his back, took his feet right out from under him. Mitchell. Or Mitchell, rather. I'm sorry. And Mitchell is slow getting up. Watch 33 in the blue now as Mitchell cuts up tries to take that inside and not offer his entire body and what Clayton does is just pick him up and put him on his back here it is again Mitchell does not offer his body to the tackler see he'll turn sideways just before he gets hit but here comes Clayton Clayton breaks down now and picks him up and throws him right down comes down on that right arm Rodney Harris is deep for Kansas as Thompson comes in to punt his second of the day the first one was good for 40 yards Back on the 37-yard line, and the Jayhawks get a break. If you have not played in cold weather or practiced in cold weather, all of a sudden you walk into it, it makes a difference. Well, I'll tell you what, too. Don't get the underdog excited, because if they do and start believing they can do things, there's no telling what will happen. The crowd is back into the ball game now, but you see the snap wasn't that bad, a little bit low, below the knees, just couldn't get a handle on it. Orth comes in, sends Kansas to the same formation, and pressure all over the place. They set up a screen, and my gosh, who's in the middle of it? You got four blue shirts out there for the ball carrier, but the man right smack dab in the middle of the whole bunch is Brian Bosworth. Penalty flag now as we have a little fight break out. Well, I tell you, that, was, that play was set up perfectly, too, but it shows you what an All-American does. Brian Bosworth wasn't fooled at all, stayed at home, read the screen, and took everybody out of the way and made the play. Of course, then they had some words. You know, that's the kind of stuff he likes. Get excited. Let's have some words. You want to talk? All right, throw the flag. Here he is now, fighting off blockers. One, two, three. Still in the hunt. Takes down Snell. See the crowds jumping on him now. They're starting to get after Bosworth. That's the kind of stuff the Bos likes. 
There you got an unsportsmanlike conduct call on both sides of the ball. And I think probably a little lecture from the referee John Laurie. <laughs> well deserved. Unsportsmanlike saying, conduct. Off, let's play. Defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense. I think outside of the price of oil, the hottest topic in the state of Oklahoma is will the Boz be back next year? He's eligible, but I think he's going to go to the National Football League. Let's go, Bill! Ball is back on the 44. It's second down and close to 13. Trying to set up a halfback pass. It's thrown up for grabs. Vaughn fighting for it. Intercepted on the deflection by Scott Girl of Oklahoma. And the Sooners get it back. <laughs> Willie Vaughn was the intended receiver, and the ball was tipped. And Girl comes away with it. Valisetti put this play into the books this week. He has the option pass. Snell is going to throw it. But the school paper was out at practice. Took a picture of it. There's a big picture of Snell throwing the football in the paper yesterday. You don't think Oklahoma saw it? Boy, they read that one right away and made the interception. Scott Garl. Well, he had double coverage. He had no chance, real, if, really, at the ball unless he got it on a deflection. And Jamel Holloway is back in now. The ball just over the 15 for the Sooners. And on first down, carrying is Anthony Stafford. And he'll have it up around the 18-yard line. Well, there was a lot of pressure on that halfback option pass on Snell, too. And he kind of threw it up for grabs. Just hung up there like a balloon. Carl Cavanis is in there in a the wide receiver spot, number 83, a sophomore out of Tulsa. Holloway keeps it and gets around the corner. The one difference I think that you see here in the, uh, between Mitchell and Holloway is Jamel played this offense uh, in California, Banning High School. So he's had more experience with it than has Mitchell. And there's an example there. He keeps the ball. Now, he could have committed himself, but he sensed that the door might open for him. So he simply paused for a fraction and then turned the corner with it. And that's what makes him so very, very difficult. Third down and a yard. And the ball off to number 25. No, it is kept by Holloway. And this is what makes him difficult right here. I thought Holloway had given it away to Stafford. And lo and behold, he turns around and comes right back up the middle and picks his way through for the big game. Well, it's a perfect fake, too. Now, that holds everybody right there. But also, the outside contain people, and they have talked about that this week in practice. Stay after him. So he just cuts it back. And he does that as well as anybody in the country. Oklahoma has called a timeout with 29 seconds to play in the first half. They own the football first down at their own 43-yard line, and they lead by a score of 20 to nothing. But it was interesting yesterday talking to these Oklahoma coaches. They said because they had Rodney Anderson into the game, who is just a youngster and virtually inexperienced, that they were going to not have the predetermined or not have the read offense that you have on the triple option which makes it so dangerous because the quarterback reads what goes on and whatever you do is wrong because then he takes his next option but this was all going to be predetermined if they say they were going to run a play they were going to tell you in the huddle who was going to get it not read and just go next saturday we'll watch number one miami at pittsburgh against the Steelers. Uh, the uh, the steel town's favorite topic right now the the growing emergence of a pit football team as Holloway drops back to throw. Looks and looks and looks and throws and Jackson's wide open and drops the ball. Keith was down there five yards in the clear and just flat dropped that one. But Mike Gottfried it's an interesting story that he went from Kansas to Pittsburgh and uh, watch Jackson here now the ball right in his hand. He's having the same problem I'm having in this cold weather. It's concentration. If he had made that catch, though, he would have broken the Oklahoma school record and also the Big 8 school record. He has 29.4 yards per catch, but he only has nine of them. You need 10 for the record. That would have been number 10. So it's second down and 10 for Oklahoma. They go back to the air, throw it underneath this time, caught by Cavanis. 
And Carl's out of bounds across midfield at the Kansas 41 yard line. Well, considering the weather we run into here this afternoon, the ball turning hard and slick on them, uh, Miami is going to be coming north to Pittsburgh next week. And uh, the possibility is that uh, they could run into some cold weather in Pittsburgh. Well, they really could. kajemi has been getting better every week, but the, the problem is, and the big question is, how badly hurt is Kajemi? He was injured in today's ball game. He came back and played in the second half. There's another catch by Cavanis, and he's just past the marker, just inside the 31, and he'll have another sooner first down, and he's out of bounds, stopping the clock with nine seconds. Now they're facing the win. This would be a huge effort by Tim Lasher, trying to knock one that distance into this win. He's hit from 43 and from 20, but the 43-yarder came with the win. So they may try to get him a little closer here as Holloway steps back, throws again to the sidelines, and again Cavanis is available and makes the catch down at the 22. And now they'll give Lasher a shot at it. Five seconds to go in the first half. And a timeout called by Oklahoma to keep the clock at five. And right now, let's take a look at the University of Oklahoma. 39-yard field goal try by Tim Lasher into the wind. It's no good. He tried to hook it back in, but that's a problem you have with the wind. It wouldn't let it hook. He just kept it out to the right, and he missed it by a couple of yards on the right side, and the first half is over. And the Oklahoma Sooners dominating and leading by a score of 20 to nothing. Okay have the wind in the third quarter and Kansas will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. So far the Jayhawks have not been able to generate any kind of an offensive threat against Oklahoma. The Sooners scored easily the first four times they had the ball and then things cooled off for them as the Hawks defense dug in and batted them around some. Patrick Collins incidentally has a knee that locks on him and apparently this was one of those times and he's all right. Kickoff by Todd Thompson will go way back and off the field of play. The first scoring of the ball game came on an 18-yard run by Jamel Holloway to put Oklahoma ahead 7-0. Well, they got a key block from Keith Jackson's tight end, 88. See him kicking it back there, and that opened up the way for Holloway to come around and take the corner. Set up by an interception by Vickers. Second touchdown also by Holloway. A little tougher run from 10 yards out. No, it was the same type thing, though. He got the cutoff block, and then Shepard made the final cutoff block there, and he just kind of slithered into the end zone. And two last field goals. That's where you are, 20 to nothing. My fourth at quarterback is the Kansas Jayhawks start. First down from their 20. The run and shoot. This one works for Willie Vaughn, but he's shirt tailed by Sonny Brown, and it winds up a four-yard gain only. The run and shoot offense stretches the seams in the zone with deep patterns and a multitude of receivers. It's a big play offense, but they haven't had the big play. See the tackles by Bosworth and Johnson and Vickers there, and Vickers also had the key interception. And then Kansas came, really played some solid defense in the second quarter, although I think Oklahoma played under its potential. Second down and six from the 24. For the Jayhawks, off delivers it. The ball is caught just over the 25, near the 26 by Ronnie Caldwell, and then he's immediately pounced on by David Vickers. Vickers originally intended as a quarterback, but it's turned out to be a fine safety. Look at that, 283 total yards to 20 for Kansas. Two turnovers by Kansas, they can't do that. And minus 20 yards rushing. And they're looking at third down and just a little less than five. Pass to the sidelines is good for a first down up at the 32-yard line, caught by Peter Samuel. And that gets some applause from the sparse gathering on this cold afternoon. As the Jayhawks have it, first down at the 32-yard line. You can't keep throwing the ball sideways. Sooner or later, you're going to have to stick one down the middle, and so far, they've had no luck in getting the ball down the middle at all. Hand off to Snell. Snell is caught and dragged down after a two-yard pickup. 
At about the 34, David Vickers and Paul Miliazzo. Miliazzo, number 42. Miliazzo is a interesting linebacker. He is very good. He is a fifth-year player. He's in graduate school and very intelligent, has a high grade point average. He says because he has graduated now as in grad school that there is a lot less pressure on him. He did not play well against Kansas City the last time he was here in the loss, and he is from this area. They grew up in Kansas City area. Ball dropped by Horst, recovered by Oklahoma. Bouncing on the ball is Brian Bosworth, and the Sooners are in business. Well, again, they use the motion man. They're trying to run the linebackers out of there, or the secondary man. This time, he just drops the ball, does not get a clean snap, but Bosworth comes in and makes the recovery. And it's Oklahoma first down at the Kansas 28-yard line. How do you analyze that? He just doesn't have the ball, but keeps dropping back anyway. Jamel Holloway is the quarterback. Earl Johnson is the fullback. He fumbles the football. Kansas man had a shot at it, but I don't know if he came up with it. Looked like it came nope. right back down to Johnson. He did. He just dropped right back in. Earl, I think, was able to recover it. Either Earl or number 66, but it was Johnson. John Phillips is in there with him. John Here takes up again. a lot of room. He's 270 pounds. See him at the top of your screen? There, the helmet hits it right, right on the football. Who was that? Looked like Steinhauser, 23, got his helmet on it, and just popped it out, and it came right back down and landed on him, and he made the recovery. All the way, rolling it around the corner, and it's caught and back down, back on the 25-yard line. The tackle made by number 73, Teddy Newman, a junior from Las Vegas, Nevada, for Kansas. Earl Johnson reminds me of Don Nottingham. Remember him? Yeah. Johnson is 5'11", 205 pounds. He looks like a bowling ball going through this. Yeah, but uh, Don was, what, 5'8"? Yeah, he was even shorter. That's yeah. exactly right. And I think he weighed a little bit more. Yeah. Third down for the Sooners. Holloway rolls it back to throw it. As a man delivers it, Sheriff Shepard catches to the seven-yard line, where it's a first and goal to go for Oklahoma. He caught the ball in front of Johnny Granderson. It's a pretty nice throw by Holloway, too. Holloway really does not look off his first receiver, basically, because he only has one receiver most of the time in the pattern. This time he looked at him, still had a little wobble on it, but got it out to Shepard. He just ran that quick sideline and came back for the football, and it was a nice play. Boy, he threw a pass in the first half that was about as ugly as I've ever seen. Slipped right out of his hand. Five out of six, 59 yards for Holloway. Up the middle, Johnson, touchdown! Well, it's sort of a matter of uh, when they want to, huh? Well, they wanted to this time, and again, it was Johnson. We were just talking about him. He's 211 pounds, but he also has good speed. But, golly, you could have gotten anybody to run through that hole. It's the offensive line for Oklahoma that's doing a marvelous job today, opening up things, controlling the line of scrimmage. I also said that, that Holloway threw that pass in the first half, and it was Mitchell. Holloway's now five or six. Extra point by Tim Lasher is good. So 11.53 to go in the third quarter, and the Oklahoma lead grows to 27 to nothing. A cool gray afternoon in the heartland of the country, and the home folks kind of gloom right now because their team is losing 27 to nothing. 11.53 to go in the third quarter, and Oklahoma will kick off. For the first time since October 2nd, 1931, Memorial Stadium has the lights lit. The last time was against Haskell College. Under the lights, it was 6 nothing that ball game. Haskell won it, and Haskell brought its own lights. Who is Haskell's most illustrative alumnus? You got me. One of them, I would say. A fellow named Thorpe. Oh, he was from Carlisle. Yes, he was. He played his collegiate ball at Carlisle, but he was educated originally at National Indian College. Yep. Let's go. Sooners kick it off. They've got to hold it because the wind keeps blowing it off the tee, and once again, uh, Thompson has three as he knocks it all the way down and through the upright. Now let's join Jim Lampley in New York. All right, given the unlikelihood that Kansas is going to threaten Oklahoma, trailing as they are 27-0 in the third quarter, we're going to switch you now 
to Baton Rouge, Louisiana for a highly competitive game between Mississippi and LSU. First, before we take you down there, we want to show you the LSU touchdown, which has brought the Tigers from 21-9, their halftime deficit, to within 21-16, a 29-yard touchdown pass from Tom Hodson to Wendell Davis. In the first half, each team scored three times, the difference being that the Rebels scored three TDs, as Mark Young, their quarterback, had a big half, passing for 158 yards. LSU was able to get only three field goals, and we are going to take you back to Baton Rouge, where Mississippi hasn't won for 18 years, immediately after this commercial message. From their 20, having missed that pass, Orth rolls it, trying to find some room, delivers it to Snell, and Snell gets two yards, and then he's buried. How many first downs does Kansas have? They've got two first downs in the ball game. Minus yards rushing, have not had a successful passing day, although Orth has not had much time. Snell is a talented player, too. You know, he was highly recruited, had over, has over 20 catches already this year. The lone setback in that offense. He's a junior college transfer, was a wishbone quarterback in high school. Third down for the Jayhawks from the 23, third and seven. Again, that quick little pop and diving ahead for what appears to be a first down, Ronnie Caldwell. Looks like the linesman has given him a favorable mark. And it will be the third first down of the ball game for the Jayhawks. Nice play by Caldwell. Made a difficult catch and then turned and lunged past the first down stakes. He was a walk-on, which is a, a misnomer because he flies. He doesn't walk anywhere, but he came in without a scholarship and he's playing now. Ran track at Butler County Community College. It was timed in the 40 and 439. Tom Quick listed as the number two quarterback. Is now at wide receiver. And here's a little bit of an option effort on the part of the quarterback Orth. Ball goes to Snell, and Snell is collared by Bosworth. Had him by the back of the helmet, it appeared. And his progress is four yards up to about the 34. Four yards. Quick hooked up with Mike Norseth here two years ago for one of the big plays in Kansas upset of Oklahoma. Second down and six. Pops it, now throws it, and is caught by number 80, Rodney Harris, for another Jayhawk first down. I thought he was going to lose it because he took the time to pump it trying to free his receiver, but he was able to stay clear of the pressure. And you can hear the coaches screaming, there he is, there he is. He rolled right to avoid the pressure and threw on the run. Now that has to take a strong arm to get it like that when you're playing it, throwing off the wrong foot across your body. But Harris came clear and really skated with it. When he saw that he was blanking out of the pocket, he kind of rolled with it. And they've got a first down at their 44. Runs out of time as number 80 comes in to get him. Troy Johnson, the defensive, right in. The ends have had it pretty much uh, their way today, particularly the end coming from the right side, defensively. He was about to get sacked, and as he was going down, Orth bumped into his own man, offensive tackle Bill Hundell. I thought he was going to hand him the ball. That would have been interesting. Hundell's only a freshman, but he's 6'5", 260 pounds. Go hook! Scott Garl is in defensively for Oklahoma, and David Vickers comes out in the secondary. It's second down and about 19, 18. Set up a screen here for Snell, but Bosworth once again is there to spoil it. I think the Boz is talking to him, too. Again, Tepper's almost player. Keep an eye on him. This is a stunt all the way. He's dogging, comes through. Well, I thought he came through cleanly, but he didn't. He had to fight his way through. Now he stops and reads. And Boy, they tell you, if you're going to make a mistake, make it full speed. Don't stand around. So he got after it, and he took Snell down. Loss is back near the 30-yard line. They've got to go to the Oklahoma, inside the Oklahoma 46 to get a first down. So they need 24, 24 and a half on third down. Option down the line, Snell, no place to go. Sonny Brown is over there and drops him inside the 30, back to the 28. 
And now Kansas has to punt into the win, and once again, Oklahoma is almost certain to get good field position out of it. Well, you just don't play it any better than that. They use that motion, man, to find out if it's man or zone defense. It was zone, nobody moved. Brown saw it coming, he even yelled it out and waved for the other guys to come over that way, and they came up and made the play. Derek White is now the beat man for Oklahoma as Reed comes in to punt. Gets it out. And the ball is a fair caught just across midfield by Ricky Dixon. It was a 22-yard punt. That's what the wind can do to it. Gleaming, as Tim said, here at Memorial Stadium on the University campus in Lawrence. And Oklahoma owns the football at the Kansas 49-yard line first down, leading by a score of 27 to nothing. And Jamel Holloway is back in at quarterback. He's been sharing the time today with Eric Mitchell. Hands the ball off to Spencer Tillman. And Spencer Tillman reaches the 28-yard line of Kansas. Brought down by Undra Lofton. It's another Sooner first down. Power football, power, power football. You know, we asked Barry Switzer yesterday, how do you defend against the Oklahoma power wishbone? And he said, well, when you have better people, better people can stop it, and that's it. And right now, Oklahoma has the better people. Better athletes. Carrying is Anthony Stafford. You always know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> The sophomore out of St. Louis, slashing speed. He's just inside the 25 with that carry at seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. <laughs> Doing a game like being out with Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six. <laughs> Gaping hole in the middle, split the secondary, and Earl Johnson's speed carried him into the end zone. That'll go down as a 24-yarder. Boy, that is a gaping hole, too. Watch the left side of that line. Now, we're talking John Phillips, Mark Hudson, Simpson. They just pull their way through there, and then Johnson comes in behind them and takes it up, and it was a wide-open hole, and he just sprints it in from there. And there's nobody in the secondary to come out either because they had already gone wide and came up to press and support the run on the corners. Lasher for the extra point. It's good. So the Sooners from the 49 take that field position and convert it into seven more points and lead 34 to nothing. Johnson having a big day, run it 12 times, pick up 86 yards, average better than seven, and a couple of touchdowns, put on the warm clothes and sit down. Most impressive thing I've seen this afternoon is everybody on the sidelines from Oklahoma was putting on the jackets. They'll have to hold the ball on the tee because the wind coming from behind them is too strong. We'll sit up there. As Todd Thompson, the sophomore from Sapopa, will kick it off. Scott Schreiner will take it the end zone and will not return it. Six yards deep, nothing going there, so he'll at least accept the spot at the 20. At 7.09 to play in the third quarter. You have to start looking down the road. Oklahoma will be 7-1 after today. They'll be 8-1 before they meet Colorado, which could be for the Big 8 title, and then Nebraska, of course, the week after that. And they've got serious snow in Lincoln, Nebraska today. First down from the 20 for the Jayhawks. Orth shoots it. Intercepted. What a great play by Ricky Dixon. It was a bullet. Orth has a powerful arm. He had a man streaking for the clear, but Dixon just simply makes a great play. Well, again, he doesn't look off his receivers. You can see his eyes. He's following him all the way up the right side. Dixon reads it. He's running to that area. He's just following the quarterback's shoulders and reading his eyes all the way and comes up and makes the interception. They were in his own coverage. He just stepped in front of the receiver. And the Sooners have the ball just short of the 33 of Kansas. 
And an opportunity to add to their total. It was a good replay, Keith. You could read the same thing the defensive back was reading. Uh -oh. Coming around on the reverse. This is Keith Jackson. And he is gone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Keith Jackson. Well, get out the wide-angle lens, boys. I think Barry Switzer's about to smile. Here comes big old Keith Jackson, and he can run. It's not, not unusual to see him take this reverse. He did it against Nebraska, ran it for a touchdown, but it is unusual to see a guy that's 6'3", 240 pounds, run with that speed and that agility. Made some nice cuts in there, cut inside two blocks, took it down the sidelines for the touchdown. I sure will attempt the extra point. Lasher in for another extra point try. And again, it's good. Oklahoma scores 14 points in 14 seconds and lead 41 to nothing. This is uh, Coach Palacenti's house. They're really in the spirit of things here. Let's see what's going on. Trick or treat. Oh, boy. Hi, Coach. Al, how are you? What do you got for me tonight? Well, this is what we're giving out tonight, Al. Right here. Here you Super. go. Super. Okay. How you been doing? Doing very well. Good. Thanks. Bye-bye. See you, Al. Take care. Al, you need to take that back, because uh, Bob's going to need some of that and a big spoon tonight after this, because his Halloween has turned into something of a nightmare. 41 to nothing, and we've got... 6.55 to play in the third quarter. He's been tricked and not treated. Again, it's Schreiner deep, and again, it's Thompson kicking off. And he is still not merciful. He knocks this one beyond the field of play as well. Here's Al. Keith, there isn't a better jack-o'-lantern carver than Alan Atkinson. This was the most scary pumpkin carved. He was the champion, along with all these others. He won other awards, like runner-up for most creative, and even this one. How did you get good at this? Uh, it's a, sort of a family tradition. We've just been doing it ever since I was a kid. We carved them to try and look like our, uh, our Halloween costumes. And uh, my dad taught me, his dad taught him, just particular carving style. Just... It's seasonal work, but good if you can get it. Now, you're supposed to smash these things, and of course, we can't do that here. Hang on one second. Now, Alan, I hope you're not insulted, but we got to get one of these things smashed. So here you go. Take that outside and smash it up. I want that one on the lower left. It looks like one of my cousins. <laughs> I took the kids out into a pumpkin patch this past week and let them pick their own pumpkins and we said they had to pick one the size of their head. Jason came back with one that weighed about 50 pounds. <laughs> second down after I saw a fumble a moment ago. Recovered by Kansas. Second down now about 13. And Orth getting pressure and he loses the ball in the end zone. That's a live ball. It's out of the end zone. Safety for Oklahoma. Score two for the defense. Mike Aljo. Was the man that had a hold of him, forced the ball loose, and it rolls over the back line. Well, here it is. Let's see how the ball came loose. He dropped back. It looked like a routine pass. Pressure's coming from the both sides, outside. That's uh, where it's been coming from all day. Mike Aljo did hit him. Now the ball's loose. Looks like Dylan tried to get there. It is Dylan, 41. Tried to get that touchdown, but it was out of the end zone before he could get there. So now it'll be a free kick. And Oh, Oklahoma will get it one more time. Let's turn it into a track meet. This, of course, is the home of the Kansas Relays. I had a little visit yesterday with Jim Ryan. Jim had to go off out of town today, but he's back living in the Lawrence area, having gone to school here, the great Myler. One of the heartbreaking stories in all of athletics, as great as he was, Jimmy never got the gold medal. And falling in Munich and being denied his last opportunity. They say exercise retards age, and boy, he's still, he looks like he did when he was running in the Olympics. He, he really, he looks, he looks younger. You see the futility of Kansas's offense today. They just haven't been able to get anything going. They're minus 51 in yardage. And Max Smith will 
kick off the tee, trying probably to keep it under the wind and get as much on it as you can. Derek Shepard is the deep man, along with Derek White for Oklahoma. To steal the old line from Davey Nelson, we may have to start measuring this game instead of yardage in mileage. Down the middle it goes, and it's fielded by Derek Shepard. He picks it off, makes his turn at the 27, gets a hole up the middle, and it's a foot race to the corner. And he has finally run out of bounds on the far side by Max Smith, the kicker. Out at the 14, 13-yard line. 50-yard return by Derek Shepard. Oklahoma has speed everywhere you turn. This is not a good kick, and it's a very difficult kick to field. Looks like a knuckleball. But Shepard takes it up the right side. They've got a right return. But now his instincts take over. See him cut against the grain, plants that right foot twice, and pushes off of it almost at a right angle. Now he's going all the way across. It was a foot race, as you said, but still the tackle's not made. Just his momentum carries him out of bounds. Eric Mitchell is the quarterback with Stafford, Anderson, Smitherman in the backfield. Smitherman, Don, number 24. They take it inside with Anderson, who started today at fullback. They have not played Lydell Carr. and hope they wouldn't have to, and at this juncture, they won't have to. And the other fullback, Perry, did not make the trip. They've got a couple of tough ball games down the road at Colorado and at Nebraska. Gives it to Stafford. And the line escorts him down near the seven-yard line. Oklahoma along the front. Phillips 275. And this is the first unit I'm giving you. Uh, Hudson 280. Simpson 265. Phillips Anthony Phillips 280. Greg Johnson 295. And the tight end Jackson is at 240. Here's the remaining schedule for the Sooners. The second unit, a lot of them are starting to show up in the ball game. In fact, they've been in the ball game off and on. They're also big, but not quite as big as the first unit. Anderson with the ball. And looks like he's got a first down as he gets down to about the three. And we've got a pretty good scuffle going. Well, this is silly. They've been trying to have fist fights. Look at Barry pulling people out of there. His players. He's upset with his players. He doesn't want them in there. They started fighting back in the first quarter. And it just seems a silly thing to do because uh, Oklahoma, Bosworth on a couple of occasions was involved in early fracas early on. But Barry immediately onto the field, and this is something he doesn't like. There, there will be a lecture going home about this. And I doubt very seriously if you'll see uh, the tight end there, Parham, back in the ball game too, because he came up and the play had, had ended, and he threw a punch at the secondary guy. Now I don't know who threw the first one, but I did see that one. It was flagrant. That's the one the official saw. It's also it the one that Barry saw, and I yeah. doubt if he'll get back into it. Rick Clayton, I think, was the one involved in it. Watch Barry now. Watch this. You think he's upset? Look at him pulling people out of there. His guys. Well, I never run across a greater competitor than Switzer. He played as a little guy. Frank Brawls down at Arkansas, but uh, unsportsmanlike fearless. conduct. Both teams, two players each team disqualified. So two on each side kicked out of the ball game. Referee will go across and give the <coughs> coaches the numbers of the two players on each side. John Lorre being the referee, so he's gone over to the Kansas side now to pass on the information. Parham uh, certainly is one of those. Uh, and Clayton, you have to believe for Clayton Kansas. is gone. Yep. I, I might have been Stafford. Uh, he came to the sidelines, but. Uh, I know I understand the Kansas frustration here but uh, it's been sort of a feisty social gathering from from the outset by both sides. You know the thing is too if you get in a fist fight with a football uniform on you end up hurting your own hand. Really you're, silly. Isn't it? Yeah you're hitting helmets you're hitting shoulder pads and your hand gets bruised. 
The only way to have any success is if you grab the face mask and kind of un come under it. They don't let you do that, and so the fighting is silly. I mean, it'd be silly anyway, but hard to understand. Well, we've got order restored now with four players ejected from the game, and Oklahoma owns the ball. First down and goal from the three. Earl Johnson, Don Smitherman, and Rodney Anderson lined up behind Eric Mitchell. Go to Anderson, touchdown for the Sooners. So Rodney Anderson getting some seasoning today and doing very well. Well, we talked to Barry Switzer yesterday. He's very, very high on Anderson. Says he's a quality athlete, that he's good, he's strong. He can do everything that the other guys have done that have played all year. And a lot of times it takes an injury or two to another player to give a, a young guy an opportunity. He's got the opportunity today and he's making the best of it. Well, you got this much talent, you're this deep, you know, everybody wants to play it. Everybody, I'm sure, is entitled to play and have the ability to play. So, as Lasher kicks one more extra point straight through, it's now at 4.29 to go in the third quarter. It is 50 to nothing. Oklahoma running away with a ball game. Yeah. And was the coach of Missouri. That was the day that uh, Missouri ran away with it, 6 to 9 to 21. And uh, there have been a lot of big scores in this series, most of the big scoring done by the Oklahoma Sooners. And they're headed for big numbers again today. What I started to talk about as uh, the ball is kicked again beyond the field of play, Red Auerbach, when he was coaching the Boston Celtics, knew exactly how many shots it took to keep everybody happy in the course of a ball game. And I think when you have a football team like Barry has at Oklahoma, or in a lot of instances, good teams, you've got to find some time somewhere along the way to let athletes play, because these are quality athletes, and uh, they get their backs up a little bit if they have been recruited and don't find their way to play for a couple of three years. It's a balance of people. Here's a little draw play with Arnold Snell carrying, and Snell is belted down by Dante Jones as he moves up near the 23. Perfect example of that, Keith, is the way Barry Switzer has gotten Mitchell into quite a few ball games this year. As a matter of fact, uh, he got an opportunity to play when the shoulder was giving Holloway some problems, and Mitchell got to play an entire game and had an outstanding ball game. Well, he's a heck of an athlete. Well, he is, but you're right. You have to keep him happy. Second down, seven. Snell again to the outside. And again, it's Donnie Jones bringing him down. And Jones allows him one yard. Well, that's a fine play by Jones, too. We talked so much this season about outside leverage and those corner men containing and keeping everything inside. That time he saw that he got tied up and he couldn't keep it inside, but he stretched it out and just took him laterally across the field. To give you some measure of what the Oklahoma defensive people have been doing against ball clubs that tried to run on them, the last man to score a touchdown rushing against uh, Oklahoma's defense was Tim Manoa of Penn State. That was in the first quarter of last year's Orange Bowl. It is third down and six. And the pass under pressure, arm deflected, intended, I think, for Willie Vaughn, or maybe it was number 35, Tony Harvey, but nonetheless, bounces far short of the intended target, and the Jayhawks will have to kick. That's a great tribute to this defense, too. We mentioned earlier in the game that they haven't scored a rushing touchdown against this defense all season, and this will be, if they continue to play this way, be the third straight shutout for the defense. Rich Reed gets it. Pretty good kick into the win. Derek White settles under a fair catch at the 45 of Oklahoma. That's a 31-yard punt. And the clock stops at 2.57 to go in the third quarter. Well, Colorado State with Bartolo, their great running back, uh, having a little trouble today. And Jack Elway's Stanford Cardinal beating Washington State, while Oregon holds an edge over the California Bears. With the Ivy League scores. Those games obviously complete by now. 
How many undefeated teams remain? Miami, Michigan? I don't know, but Columbia had a big lead and still blew it. They got lead again today. 28 straight losses. First down from the 45. Earl Johnson is off to the races and long gone. Touchdown, Sooner. Again, nobody in the secondary. They're loading up. They had seven guys on the line of scrimmage. The secondary took the outside route, expecting the the option on the corner, and there is no option on the corner. It's straight, it's straight ahead. And boy, he just explodes. He's got good speed up through there, but you can't sacrifice. You can't lull, especially in a game like this. You're being embarrassed already. You don't want to give up things. You don't want to guess and run yourself out. You can see Ziegler at the top of your screen went over. He was expecting the pitch, the option on the corner, and just ran himself out of the play. Johnson's last three carries, 82 yards, three touchdowns, and the extra four try is blocked by Eldridge Avery. It's a big tackle. So they finally snap his string. That's his first miss of the season. And there's a penalty flag, so he may get another chance. What'd he call? Offside? It's a foul on Kansas, and so Lasher will have a chance Offside. to redo it. Defense, replay, extra point. No, he has not had his string broken. Well, you can't fault Kansas for that. They're easier to block when you come off sides. <laughs> <laughs> this one is right through the heart. And so he keeps his string alive, and it is now 57 to nothing. Oklahoma leading Kansas. Boy, that was some impressive run by Johnson. Not so much Johnson as it is the, the mistake of the defense, but it was explosive. You could tell he was gone after the first five steps. I think maybe the kids in the band are going to be looking for the musicians union. They got him perched up there with that a cold wind whipping down on them, and they've been tootling away all afternoon. Take a couple of days to get those lips on <laughs> loosen back up. They're good though. They're fun. The people out here in Kansas have been very congenial to us. Fine folks. Pretty campus too. How naive was I to think that Kansas was flat all the way through? Came out here and this campus is beautiful and hilly. Thompson, a high hanger that'll carry it to the end zone and fumbled there by Schreiner. He's got to cover it and he'll put it down. Down to the end zone, first and ten Kansas. Now he'll try to Keith, of course you remember Oklahoma, the 1985 Orange Bowl, and the Sooner Schooner came out on the field. Well, that brought all kinds of problems. Here are the guys to blame. They operate the Sooner Schooner, but they're dedicated fans. They pay all their expenses out of their own pocket. But there's only one problem here in Kansas. There's no schooner for them to operate. So they're going to reenact what it would be like if it was here. Guys, go ahead. Go ahead. There you have it, Keith. That's what it would be like. Folks, you have just been witness to an element we call in this business reaching. <laughs> Penalty flag on that carry. procedure on Kansas. I'd like to know what Barry told his players in the locker room. Because Oklahoma has scored Dead 37 ball, points in this procedure. Court. Offense, first down. Five yard penalty. First and 15 at the 15 yard line. That gets the old register ringing when you do it like that, doesn't it? And we're still in the third quarter. This one may go to 90. Carrying the ball, Ronnie Caldwell. And Caldwell gets out to about the 18. Flasher now is 42 out of 42 in his extra points. That was the string I was talking about a while ago. They blocked it. The man who blocked it was offside. You know, as we sit here and, and we look at Kansas, and we do know that they are young and inexperienced, I'd like to say they're on the right, right track. But even if you're on the right track, you get run over if you just sit there. You have to be aggressive. Right. 
Sox. Horn trying to get some help behind the line of scrimmage, and he gets back to about the 16 before he is finally taken down by Kenneth McMichael, number 17 for Oklahoma. Well, there's just too much standing around on Kansas. He came, he cut back that time and could have picked up a couple of blockers. They're standing around. They're not throwing their bodies. They're not being aggressive. Look for a red hat. Look for a white jersey and just try to go block it. Try to hit somebody. Wow. 457 yards to 17. Again, they try to run that little delay up the middle and it doesn't work as Big Mike Aljo, number 55, is right there. Aljo was the man that separated the ball and created the safety a few minutes ago for Oklahoma. So the clock shows about a minute to go in the third quarter now, and Kansas will have to kick it from inside the five, and Oklahoma should get possession probably inside the 40. Derek White is the deep man. Hits the back of a Kansas man, and there it should be ruled dead. It was inside the 35 when it struck the Kansas player. That's where they mark it, at the 34, and it winds up a 19-yard punt. Next Saturday, Miami, which defeated Florida State today, by a score of 41-23, will be at Pittsburgh, and we don't know the extent of the injury to the Pittsburgh quarterback, John Jimmy had a, an injured back. And without Jimmy, I'm not sure that Pitt will be terribly competitive for Miami. Hopefully, John will be ready to go. They also run something similar to what we are seeing from Kansas today, the, the run and shoot. They do score some points out of it. It's identical, and Kinjemi runs it very well. They had 59 points. They scored last week. They did have some trouble today, and you mentioned that Kajemi was hurt. But, you know, Pitt is the last team that really, I think, has a shot at Miami because after that, it's Tulsa and North Carolina, or East Carolina, rather, and I'm not so sure either one no. can really has the personnel that Miami has. No. Pitt's the last threat. Otherwise, the Hurricanes are going to go into postseason play with a chance to win the national championship. Second down and seven as Eric Mitchell goes down the line with the ball, keeps it. And gets to about the 29 before he runs over his own man and falls down. So after three quarters of play in Lawrence, Kansas, it's 57 nothing, Oklahoma. Well, they can afford to relax on the Oklahoma side because the issue has long since been resolved. Oklahoma's football at the 29-yard line of Kansas, third down and four and a half for the Sooners. I'm off. Keith, this is a really big, big day for a lot of high school athletes that have aspirations of playing college football. Today was the day of the SAT exams. They need 700 in Proposition 48 to qualify. Mitchell drills Derek Shepard with the pass. That'll be good for a first down just inside the 20-yard line. Third quarter stats. Yeah, you see it in blue. Rushing yards, 404 for Oklahoma, minus 47 for Kansas. That tells you the story right there. Nothing fancy about it, nothing to analyze. Well, to use a Frank Royalism at this juncture, analyzing is certainly paralyzed. First down at the 20. Pitch it outside. Smitherman. And Don Smitherman, the sophomore from McAllister, will be marked down at the 12. That's a pickup of about eight yards. Just beginning the fourth quarter of play, and the Sooners leading 57 to nothing. I played the game like this. goes in at a wide receiver spot now. I played the game like this one time when I was at Maryland against Penn State. We lost 63 to 28. Felt like a week, didn't it? Felt like a week to get home. Oklahoma jumps. 
tell you a true story. I was a sophomore, and then freshmen weren't eligible, so I was relatively inexperienced. They kept running that tight end across the middle, and I kept chasing him. He kept catching it. He kept running out of bounds. <laughs> and Roy Lester was a coach at Maryland, and I heard him as I ran out of bounds on the Maryland side. He was yelling to the defensive coordinator, get Brant out of there. And the defensive coordinator says, that's all we have left. Brant's all we have left. And he says, well, get an offensive guy over there to play defense, but get Brant out of there. <laughs> Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Second down. Comes back to the 17. This is Spencer Tillman carrying the ball. Ross is in the lineup as well. He's in there at a wide receiver position right now. <laughs> Listed as a running back, but he's in at wide receiver right now. You know, though, Keith, it's things like that that really teach you football. We all learn football different ways. If you have a great play, they only show you once in the film room because they don't want you to get a big head. If you make bad plays, they show it to you over and over and over again, and you learn to read defenses. You learn what you should have done and what you could have done. Ball is on the 11, third down. They need a yard and a half for their first down. Won't get it. Eric Mitchell is caught behind the line of scrimmage and pulled down by Stacy Henson, a junior from Kansas City, the right side backer for the Jayhawks. Good penetration that time by the Kansas defense. They, they put seven guys up on the line of scrimmage. Everybody penetrated. This time they did have the pressure on the corners, and that's what got them into trouble the last time when Johnson scored on the touchdown. They all ran to the corners. This time it came their way, and there was good pursuit. There was four Kansas Jayhawks around the football, and that's what you have to do to stop these fast Oklahoma Sooners. Smitherman goes wide to the right. Mitchell is back to throw on fourth down and gang tackled back on the 25. And the Jayhawks will take over the ball and Scott Carlson, defensive end, was the first man to get through. Best defensive series of the afternoon for Kansas. They had good penetration. They came from the outside, kept everybody inside. Look at this. First of all, they keep them in the pocket. Nobody takes the play action. They're still coming up with good penetration. Outside pressure comes. He steps back inside, and the linebackers are there to make the tackle. An old big number 55, Kurt Kearns. Defensive tackle was there to make him to make the stop. Kansas takes over the ball. First down at their own 25. Mike Orth gets a little more time to throw, goes deep down the middle, it is caught. Pass is good to Peter Samuel. If he doesn't lose his balance and fall down, he scores. 5'9", 160 pounds, junior college transfer. Qualifies as one of the fastest players on the roster. Speedy skill position player. Runs the 100 in 10-2. Makes an outstanding catch. Look at that. Good body control and concentration. He almost lost it on the way down, but regained his, his grip on the football and took it down with it. But you're right. If he keeps his feet, he scores. That 37-yard pickup is the longest pass play of the season. Handed inside to Snell, and I don't think he got a thing out of that. At this point, I want to answer the persistent question, and I guess I've been asked it everywhere I've gone, and I've been all over the country all week. Why did you choose to cover the Oklahoma-Kansas game? And the answer really is quite simple. Why did you choose it? I didn't. <laughs> but the point is that uh, ABC's contract is with the CFA, and the game, I am sure, under other circumstances that would have been covered today was Auburn at Florida because Auburn was uh, one of the undefeated teams. Here is Orr throwing the ball and it's caught by Caldwell. Caldwell picks up about five yards on the play. But the point is Florida's on probation not available. So you discount that one. You'd look at Nebraska Kansas State among the games available. Nebraska lost last week. That was is now 38 to nothing ball game in that one and they've had a blizzard up there. So you start looking around as to uh, what existed and what was available. You came up with two choices. Ole Miss LSU which is being shown in the southeast and now over much of the country uh, because this one is decided and Oklahoma Kansas. Very simply that's why we're here. Passes away and Orth the quarterback takes a vicious hit from Liddell Glenn. Glenn was flying through the air and I'm pretty sure Liddell 
after the ball was gone, didn't want to hit the quarterback. But he had committed himself, and uh, you'll see what happens. Stands in the pocket, gets good pressure up front, but again, it is the backside, the corners that they apply the pressure. The ball was high. And I'm not so sure, though, the pressure from the backside caused him to throw the ball high like that. He didn't see it coming. Max Smith now is going to try a man sized field goal. 51 yards. With the wind at his back, plenty of leg. And it's good. By golly, there's no shutout today as he hits one from 51 yards. That is his career long. Smith will now kick off. Earl Johnson and Don Smitherman are the deep people. And the Oklahoma defense is probably going to be grouchy now that they've had their shutout spoiled. And Smith has knocked this one out of town. That'll come back to the 20. I think the adrenaline is pumping through his veins. Boy, he's excited. This is a true freshman. Now, there is wind in his back, but he put a strong leg into it. It could have been good from 65 yards. Now, he's a youngster. He was watching Oklahoma play on television when he was in high school last year, 18 years old. Comes in here today, 51-yard field goal. Obviously, his longest, he had only made one field goal prior to this game. Oh, I guarantee you it would have been good from 65 because it went way up into those bleachers, that <laughs> goal line. Glenn Sullivan, a junior out of Irving, Texas, is now in at quarterback for Oklahoma, and he gives the ball off to Earl Johnson, and he almost popped out of there for another big one. And he moved it out to the 35 for a pickup of 15 yards before Wayne Ziegler brought him down. Earl is hot today. And Ziegler will be sore tomorrow. Johnson's got 14 carries for 151 yards. Alabama came thundering back today against Mississippi State after having been whacked last week. Penn State plays West Virginia tonight. Michigan scored 69 points today in beating Illinois, 69-13. Smitherman carries the ball for the Sooners and picks up five yards. Looking down the road, uh, some pure outright lobbying for uh, a matchup between Michigan and Hawaii in the finale because after Ohio State, Michigan goes to Honolulu to play Hawaii, and Hawaii beat Utah today, 33 to 13. They have the second, the defense is ranked second in the nation. Behind and it's tough to go over and play in Hawaii. Especially after you, it's the end of the season, the 12th game, and you've got everything else in hand. But Michigan could well be playing for the national championship, and Earl Johnson is going again. Run down from behind, he's getting a little weary, probably, because he's run all over the county today. Johnny Granderson, was the man that finally caught him down inside the 20 at the 7, 18-yard line. Here it is again, the quick pop. They're looking at the corners. And he turns it up, and it's a foot race. I wonder if he is weary or if it's, uh, well, I guess he is. Yeah, he has run a ton today. <laughs> He's headed for 200 yards. He's got 194 now. Of course, you look at that stride. See, now... He's only 5'11", doesn't have that big, long stride. And those other guys are coming back there. They're four four sprinters, both are safeties. Keeping the ball, it is the quarterback, Sullivan. To about the 11. And they're just gobbling up the real estate now. Eight minutes and 40-odd seconds to play in the ball game. to number 24 Smitherman and the sophomore out of McAllister is going to be close to a first down for the Sooners inside the 10. These fans get a lot of credit for staying out here because it is really cold now. The wind is still blowing and they're sitting here and bearing it out. Kansas man shaken up number 90 heard on the play. That's Eldridge Avery. Let's spend a moment with Al Troutwick. First down. Well, Keith, in the much talked about category of strangest non football related facilities in a football facility, this has got to be number one. At Memorial Stadium, you're looking at a 40 year old wind tunnel that they don't use anymore because they have some better facilities now at Kansas. Here's an old wing that they used to test the aerodynamics of. It's gone by way of 
the old black and white camera. Certainly, I tried to get this thing to blow out some warm air, but it doesn't work anymore on this cold day. Back to you. We could always can turn it into a wine cooler. <laughs> uh, you know Al's cold. You know Billy Edwards is cold down on the sidelines. That news for you. They got company. Eight minutes to go in the ball game. It is a first down for the Sooners. First and goal from the seventh. And it's Johnson pounding to the two before he finally caves in under the load of blue jerseys. And look who gets off the bottom of that pile, number 18, Wayne Ziegler. He's played a tremendous game for Kansas today at safety. He's an interesting guy. He's got a 3.3 grade point average in personnel administration. He hadn't been able to really work with the personnel here this afternoon, but he's played a marvelous game. Johnson now has his 200 yards. And bingo, touchdown. He's over 200 yards. He has just scored his fourth touchdown of the day. So Big Earl is making up for what he missed during his career. All those injuries. Looking back over the Kansas football history, you know that they had one 10-0 season. And uh, you know who coached Kansas for that 10-0 season? He was only here one year. Fielding Yost. Before he went to Michigan. Flasher's extra point is up and good. And it's now 63 to 3 as you take another look at Earl Johnson's fourth touchdown of the game. Just line him up and point him. Send him into the end zone, show him which direction it is, and he just bangs his way there. In case you're curious as to what the most points ever scored by an Oklahoma team against Kansas, it was 65 nothing back in 1954 here in Lawrence. And Kansas has lost 19 of the last 21 meetings between these two schools. This will be the 20th loss. Short kick into the wind, bobbled, recovered by Kansas. Scott Schreiner covering the ball back around the 24-yard line. So the Jayhawks can't buy a break in this game. You know, Kansas is part of television sports history, though, being the first game ever televised nationally, September 20th, 1952. It was Kansas against TCU. Yep. Would you believe I remember that? Broadcast by NBC to 63 stations across the country. Mark back to throw. Pressure coming from the back side. Carrying the ball is Snell. Fumble ball like loose. Oklahoma has it. Oklahoma's claiming it. And they've got it. So just like that, Kansas turns it over again. And it's becoming an absolute crusher for the Jayhawks. Brad McBride had the ball for the Sooners. And as many games as these young players at Kansas win, they will forever remember this game because you always remember the ones where you took a licking and were embarrassed. See the right hand? Just strips him clean of it right there. Now the ball's on the ground. Here comes the play, and all of a sudden, he's right on top of it. Who was that? He right. That ball popping around as uh, the quarterback Sullivan goes down. Kansas comes up with a recovery, and so they swap turnover. Andre Lofton came up with that loose ball as Sullivan was hit, turning back into the... They never did have control of it. Came off, watch him come off the snap. That ball squirting around like a hot potato. And right here, he loses it. This is what the coaches really dread, though, because once a game gets out of hand like this, then things get sloppy, the teams get out of rhythm, and it's tough to get back. And people get hurt. Fatigue. When you get tired, that's when you get hurt most of the time. That one's intercepted, then dropped. Man had it. Oklahoma man had his hands on it, Sonny Brown, and Sonny couldn't pull it in and take possession. At 
6.53 to play in the ball game. That's what we told you about two minutes ago. <laughs> Have they been holding hands the whole game? Kansas and the Hunter? No place to go. David Shoemaker makes the first hit on Mike Orr. Holding hands symbolizes unity. And boy, they really have to stick together now because these are the toughest things a player can ever go through. And to sit in the film room tomorrow. You know, they'd be smart if they didn't show these films to the kids. Oh, I'd burn them. And come back and just start all over next week sure. and say, look, we're turning the page. We're starting here. Now let's gear it up. And let's what are you going to learn? Oh, that's learn right. Anything. Let's get ready for Colorado. That's up next, and we can get an upset there. It's third down. Ball back at the 22. They've got to go to the 38 for their first half. Ball is too high, intended for number 27, Mark Lesher. And he had no chance to make the catch, and so it's fourth down. Head coach Bob Velocente in his first year as head coach after serving as an assistant for, what, 23 years on both the college and the pro levels. He's worked hard for this opportunity. He was at Cornell, Cincinnati, Arizona, Mississippi State, and the Baltimore Colts. Florida upsetting Auburn today, 18-17. And Ole Miss leading LSU 21-19. The punt is away. And Derek White makes the fair catch back around the 32-yard line with five minutes and 56 seconds to play in the ballgame. To keep warm in Lawrence, Kansas, and then there is this way to keep warm. This portable heater, watch how good this works. With a piece of ice, it just melts it away. It's the most popular spot on the Kansas bench right now. Keith? What if we could rent it? <laughs> Send a couple up. From the 32, Sullivan hands the ball off to Eric Brooks, who is a sophomore out of Houston. In at a running back spot, he had played earlier as a wide receiver, and he picks up about four yards. Ross had a tough time getting a hold of that football. It bounced around on his chest for a, a second there, and he finally tucked it away. Oklahoma now with 507 yards rushing. Kansas minus 54. This is Rodney Anderson. He's out across the 40, and looks like he'll have a first down, and he does. That's a 43. Well, your alma mater lost another one today, didn't they? They lost a lot of tough ball games this year. It's a tough time in College Park, Keith. It really is. You know, the Lefty Drizel situ situation was ended this week. Bob Wade is the new coach at Maryland. Lefty resigned. Dick Dole had resigned earlier. There is speculation that Bobby Ross may leave at the end of the season. So it's a time of turmoil and transition in College Park. Colorado State defeated today by San Diego State. And Stanford playing very well this season. Five minutes. Audrey, remaining in the ball game. <laughs> Sullivan's got it. Jayhawker throw him down. Sullivan's a pretty good sized fellow, you know. He's 6'3, 210 pounds. And he came legging it around the corner, but the Jayhawks reacted pretty well to it. Well, 
tomorrow's another day, and I'm sure a lot of these Kansas players will go home tonight and realize that the game that seemed so all-important this afternoon really wasn't that all-important after all. They go back to classes this week, get back to life, see their family, their friends. And Sun comes up in the morning. Look toward Colorado. That's right. Second down, about a yard up the middle goes Anderson. Pounds his way for the first down all the way to the Kansas 40. The Kansas defensive unit now is just worn out. So Oklahoma can pretty much have their way for the next four minutes. Oklahoma's pretty much had its way all day. And it's so often people will pick up the paper tomorrow and say, oh, look, Barry Switzer ran up the score against Kansas. That's not the case. No, he's, he's played, played everybody. everybody. Yep. Sure, he has. And played people at different positions that they're not normally used to play. This is Sullivan. Penalty flag goes down. Sullivan headed for the end zone, but I think this one comes back. Fun for Glenn Sullivan. Number three quarterback has had very little playing time up to here. And the play is going to come back. Disappointing for Sullivan. Second, third teamers uh, for Oklahoma. A lot of them could probably start at smaller schools, but it was a fine run. And he showed a lot of speed here on the corner. First, he made the good read on the inside, held the ball, rode the hip of the fullback. Look at the agility there. Jumps over a tackler, picks up a couple of blocks, turns it in, now makes a fine cut back against the green, and takes it in for the end zone. All for naught, they bring it back to midfield. Clipping. Offense. First down. Clock showing 3.37 to play in the game. A&M stays alive. They've had some tough ball games. They're coming up against the Hogs down in Arkansas. Little Rock. On the 15th of November, that could well decide the Southwest Conference. Sullivan throws it left-handed. Did you see that? He's got the ball in his right hand. It turns it back and unloads it left-handed to Aubrey King. And they're going to bring it back because I think he was out of bounds. Either that or he juggled it all the way down. Oh, I'd put it back up, let him have the catch just for effort. Watch this. That's a good pass left-handed. And I think he made the catch, too. I Looks think his to left like foot was did. absolutely. His left yeah. foot was in. Yep, it was. Only need one foot in college. That foot was in. He made the catch and then rolled out of bounds. Pitch it back to Smitherman. And Smitherman's got it just short of the first down. The penalty hurt him on that possession. And they'll be looking now at third and about two, two and a half, close to three. You know, sometimes having this much talent can hurt you, though. When you go out and you're a top prospect, a blue chipper in high school right now, and Barry comes to recruit you, and you're seeing this game on television, you got to say, hey, wait a minute, I may never play if I come here. They're loaded. Ball's on the ground. The quarterback and the up man banging together and lost control and did not get much out of that one. I, I guess they got a yard out of it, so they're fourth down. And a yard, two yards. Fourth and two. One of the hazards of the triple option, though, he put the ball on the hip of the fullback, and he started to ride him in so that he could read the linebackers in the down tackle. And what happened is when he pulled it out, the linebacker, or the fullback tried to take it, and it just fell down. Chris Ross is in there at the wide receiver spot now, split in, number 13, freshman. On fourth and two. Smitherman picks up the first down as he crosses the 30 to the 29. And 208 to play in the game. Smitherman has quick feet. He was putting them down and bringing them up like he was running through a field of tulips and didn't want to hurt any of the, the pedals. This 
this is Rodney Anderson pounding away, and he's had a big ball game today, too. He goes from the 29 down to the 21. 11 carries, 89 yards. Bob Felicente. Boy, he's an awfully nice guy. I spent the afternoon with him yesterday, and he's having a long afternoon here today. He said playing Oklahoma would be going like 60 guys with swords coming after him. He said he would have to trick them. It didn't work. Sullivan is thrown out of bounds around the 18-yard line. Well, Leon Perry, I am sure, has watched the game today. Lydell Carr has not played. Earl Johnson has had a huge day. And Rodney Anderson has had a pretty good day. And I bet you Leon is healing. Quickly. <laughs> Quickly. You can't, can't make the club in the tub. 75th OU rush for a total of 569 yards. First down for the center. Sullivan gives it to Anderson. And he moves it from the 17 to about the 13. Johnson over 200 yards today. 203 to be exact. Four touchdowns. The record for Oklahoma is Greg Pruitt, who had 294 back in 1971 against Kansas State. Inside the 10, twisting to the 9. You've got 23 seconds to play in the ball game. Clock rolling along. And Oklahoma will continue to roll along. Bob Valicente now will go back and try to rebuild or start to build his program. And it's, this is a, Kansas has produced some tremendous players. Gail Sayers, John Hadle, Nolan Cromwell, to name a few. Penn State, West Virginia are playing tonight. So it may not be easy for Oklahoma to move up. They came into this ball game ranked fourth in the nation, and they won it by a score of 64 to 3 over Kansas. Eric Dickerson drives the offense. The Chicago Bears. The Super Bowl champs always look sweet. They meet on ABC's Monday Night Football. The most valuable players in today's game with each of the universities, Oklahoma and Kansas, receiving $1,000 for their general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Earl Johnson, 17 carries, 203, and four touchdowns. Wayne Ziegler had 13 tackles and played a strong defensive game for the Jayhawks in a game in which they were overwhelmed by the Sooners. And Earl Johnson had the biggest day of all as he scored the four TDs. He got his first one in the third quarter, a seven-yard run. That made it 27 to nothing for the Sooners. Johnson came back with a 25-yard run to make it a 34 to nothing ball game. This one just blown right up the middle. They seem to get easier for him, Keith, as the day went on. Right. At the end of the third quarter, Johnson comes up with another one from 50 yards, and that made it 57 to nothing, Oklahoma. And then in the fourth quarter, Earl Johnson from three yards out, that made it 64 to three, and that is your final score. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench. No one. By Howard Johnson, Hotels and Lodges. By Valvoline Motor Oil, where motor oil is not just motor oil. And by Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial service. Stay tuned now for updated highlights and scores of today's football action on College Football Scoreboard. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. So Oklahoma continues to march along in this ABC Sports presentation.